Hello everyone. Welcome to Floss Tube and number 14. 14. Oh my god. Um I like the number 14. Uh why you may think? Well, um many years ago when I was a teenager, I was crazy about ice hockey. I mean, seriously, crazy about hockey. And especially the NHL hockey. And I loved, I still love the country Canada. And my favorite team was the Calgary Flames for some reason. Well, the reason is the hockey player who had the number 14 at the time, which were Theo Fleury. Theoren Fleury. He was a short, fast, and a very tempered player. And at that time, uh, I uh, liked those kinds of players. So that is why I hold the number 14 very dearly. And it makes me happy that I'm gonna show you all my appreciation for your subscriptions. Um, I've hit 500 and I just took a look at it before I started filming and I was at 550. 46 I think wow <laughs> that's amazing and I'm very grateful for that and I want to show you my appreciation uh, but I will take that at the end of the video so stay tuned and <clears throat> you also got to find out a little bit about myself about me uh, about hockey um, it was easier when I was younger to, you know, stay up at night and watch the hockey and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> I can't do that now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, Swedish hockey. Well, it's not the same. It's not the same. So um, my walls were covered with pictures of hockey players. I just they were heroes, you know. And the sad thing about it is actually like looking to Theron Fleury's story, it's kind of tragic. Um, he didn't have an easy life and uh, he's an even bigger hero now when he's uh, fighting against uh, the things that he had to experience when he was younger. Um, yeah, there is addiction and stuff included in that. So yeah. Uh, anyway, let's drop that. Um, oh yes. And what's also great about number 14 is that in this floss tube, I have finish I sat up all night I was like I'm gonna finish I'm gonna finish I'm gonna finish and this is amazing because I usually don't have any fi finishes I think I have one finish like in the beginning of the year when I finished a small mill hill but now I have a mirabilia I'm sorry about the microphone. I forget it, that it's there. Look at look at this beautiful lady. She's the first Mirabilia I have ever stitched. Her name is Miss Christmas Eve. I stitched her on a hand dyed fabric, a 28 count even weave. And uh, I bought the kit from Hawkins Hobbies in England. And 
I wouldn't say that she was a difficult stitch. I think she was easy and very lovely to stitch. Um, the beads wasn't difficult. Uh, I had a little bit of, uh, well, I wasn't sure how to put on the treasures, but I think they turned out fine. What I find a little bit difficult is actually these uh, small parts where you have like four stitches of a color and you have four beads and then you have some back stitching and for, I find it very difficult to, to start the threads um, and end them if you don't have anything to fasten them in. So that, that's a little bit of challenge and I don't have enough um, stitching experience to, to feel like I know what I'm, to know what I'm doing. So yeah, I'm very proud of her. I'm very proud. Um, and I actually got a lot of threads left. So now I'm like, oh my God, I have bought so many different uh, kits, Mirabilia kits. And I'm gonna have so much thread over, left over. So I guess um, I will uh, have to, you know, add them to the DMC collection and use it on my Heaven and Earths. So I just wanted to show you all that's left. So all this are like DMC threads that are left. And the pattern called for two skeins of 304 and I only used one and I still have leftovers on this one. And it called for two skeins of the, uh, the 3345, the green. And I used that and started on the other and there's not not a lot left, but there's there's some left, I guess. So um, I think I don't think I have made so many mistakes with the green, but there were a lot of green in the dress. So you use that color a lot, and then <laughs> there's one skein of. 3768 and um, you just use that for backstitching the gloves. So, I mean you could save a little bit of money I think if you have the colors already but then you know you have to make sure that what you have is enough so you don't have to go and get another color and then there's a big difference in the dye lot so and then I have leftovers on the the water lilies. Is that how you call it? The Karen collection water lilies. Lilies, lilies. It's, it's a word I have very <laughs> big problems to um, to pronounce. I don't know why, but yeah, um, I think that's difficult to see. But there there is a lot left on all four colors. Yeah, so it's that was some very nice thread. It's the hand dyed, um, I think it's hand dyed. Um, silk threads, I guess. Uh, and they're 12 stranded, so that's very nice. I'm very pleased with the kits that was provided by Hawkins and I have of course plenty of beads left as well so there was there were no time where I thought that she, 
I'm going to run out. No problem at all. So, so I will keep them here in my Doris um, storage box. And so, so that's that. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to start a new Mirabilia, of course, of course. And I wanted to try to stitch one on linen 32 count, which is the fabric that the patterns are called for. So I'm very curious to start that. And I only have two kids, I think. I think I only have two kids where I have the fabric, which is called for. And one of them is the portrait of Veronica. And I just love that lady. She is so beautiful. Have you seen the dress? Where did I put the... The pattern let's see whoops I have my stitching machine here um, all those wonderful colors in her dress is my absolute favorite colors yeah She is so, 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 so beautiful. And there is um, only Krennic, only, only Krennic as a specialty thread. Otherwise it's DMCs and you're gonna stitch with some blends. And the DMC color 282ZA was discontinued. So they replaced that with another Krennic. So I'm very, I'm very curious to stitch with that and I I can't figure out where in the pattern the Krennic's going to be and there is one two three four five six seven seven different uh, beads but no treasures so that's kind of nice as well so yeah I'm really looking forward to stitch that dress it has a lot of um, of detail in it so very happy about that. So today I've been working on kitting her up. Well, I don't know if you call it kitting it up because I already had the kit, but I'm preparing to start the stitching. So I've sewn the edges of the fabric and I've put the fabric in the frame. I marked out the middle with the thread. Um, I had to sew the what do you call it to be able to pull the these things you know how do you call it well you sew like a canal or something i don't know what you call it in english to be able to put this this small wooden stick in it so otherwise when you tension the quantum frames it loosens the weave so you need to fasten it somehow so it's all prepared to to be in start to be stitched on uh, words man and i found a little storage box uh, where i had some dmc threads for two different heaven and earths which uh, i have decided i will not continue stitch so I could use this container for something else. So I'm bobbinating the thread and I put the Krennic here and here's the other threads from Miss Christmas Eve. It's the, st the skin colors and there is some for the hair, I think. So I decided to, to keep them there just in case, but otherwise I'm bobbinating and what I do is I need to get more of these bobbins. So this, these are the paper bobbins. I prefer the plastics, but then I need a pen to, to write on. And then I take, for example, this color and that's 943. 
I take a pen and I write 943 here at the top. Three. Like so, I think you can see that. So this is how I have stored all my DMC collections as well. Like that. And then I pull these off. And then I separate. I want like a, the yarn to be in a ring like this. And I hold it like this. And then I find an end and I pull out some of it like this. And I take my card, I fasten the thread like in this, and then I just start winding it up on the bobbin. takes a little bit of time, especially if you're starting in a heaven and earth and you have 90 colors to wind or even over 200 if you storage the colors like that. I know there is a bobbin winder, which I've tried, but I didn't find it to be that very effective. I think that winding it myself like this is more effective. Like so. And then the last end I just fasten in one of those, uh, yeah, so like this. And then I just put it, I put it in, in number, uh, what do you call it? In order, you know, so from the, the highest number to the lowest, right? So I organize that as I go with the bobbinating. So, like so. So with a Mirabilia, you don't have that many. So that's what I'm gonna work on today. Continue with that. And I think, I'm not sure yet, but I think I will, I don't know, plans, me and plans, no. But my, my, th my thought is to stitch the whole mirabilia because now I've tried to stitch and bead as I go. So I was thinking maybe I should just stitch as many do and then just do the beading at the end. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but so I have all the, the beads as well here. I have the embellishment package. And those will go in the Doris container. And then I'll be ready to go. However, I thought I was just going to, you know, jump in and start the new Mirabilia. But today I feel really like I want to stitch some of my Heaven and Earths. And it's the Dragon in the Morning, the mini one that I started uh, this week. And I'm really eager to start uh, the Fantastic Voyage, especially now when I'm off work. So I'm actually planning on when I've done finishing the, um, the Mirabilia, you know, organizing everything, I'm going to take um, the fabric I got from Lakeside Needlecrafts. Um, which I bought for the Fantastic Voyage, uh, thanks to the um, gift card from Rachel Ray. And I'm gonna, since this is not pre-gridded, I decided to go with some colored fabric. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take some of my fitting line and 
grid it out like uh, well at least a page anyway and I really want to start to stitch that one but then I will have to pull threads as I go from my big collection and that's going to take a lot of time so it's not the best organized way to go I do have these Paco uh, things now I have it in the living room where you know you can have a strand of that color on a needle and you stick them into the Paco organizer and then when it's time to stitch that color you know you already have a pre-threaded needle of that color so yeah I'm thinking about that and then I really feel like stitching a page of my soft as steel this one where, where I started here let's see I need to see in the camera what I'm doing I, I started diagonal stitching trying it here but then I felt like I was like out on thin ice because I've removed the gridding for some reason I don't know why so I'm also actually considering gridding out the next page whoops and stitch one of those I'm not gonna you know have to be able to finish anything of this even though I have two more weeks to be off from work uh, so I won't I don't think I would finish a page of a background color I'm not sure but this is I usually go with what do I feel like doing I want to have at least one or two days with the mini dragon in the morning and continue that and get a feeling for you know 10 stitching with two over over one and 25 count and the diagonal stitching um, and gr gridding the fabric for the fantastic voyage and that would be nice to kind of stitch a couple of maybe three grids of um, of that so that's what I'm what I feel like what I really feel like doing so that's like the upcoming plans for the two coming weeks um, yeah I miss stitching heaven and earth and the parking and all that uh, so listening to audiobooks and stitch that uh, I think yeah I would feel very happy before going back to work and having a mirabilia finished and probably I will you know take a day maybe to stitch on Veronica because um, I'm very excited about that as well um, I have two other sorry I have it over here I'm not sure if I stitched on my squirrels of Sumatra since the last floss tube. I'm I'm a little bit of uncertain, but I will show you that this is how it looks at the moment. Um, somebody told me I don't know if it feels like I've told you guys about this, but somebody told me to get if I get like three skeins of Gloriana because I realized I don't have enough thread to start stitching you know switch between the different skeins so the if there is a difference in the dialogue you won't notice that much so that that's a very good advice actually so in a way I feel like I don't know if I want to continue um because i think i need to order the gloriana acorn color from abroad you know from the states and that means you know the gloriana costs quite a bit and then you need the shipping and you need the the duty fees and uh, all this and i'm like it's going to be kind of costy and i would rather spend that money on something else at the moment so we'll see what happens with it. At the 
the same time, it's... You know, at least now I know what, why I thought that I had enough threads and then I realized I didn't have enough. So it's just a learning curve. I, it's just that I don't know if I want to continue stitching it at the moment. I will just wait until I decide to spend the money on that thread. Like that. And then <clears throat> I was at my mother's place. So I got to stitch on my my um, owl forest embroidery. And this one is called Enchanted Forest. And I just love the fabric and the threads. It's very nice. The, the feeling compared the linen comparing linen. This linen and the Mirabilia linen, they're so different and it bothers me that I don't know which linen uh, Hawkins hobbies are using. Because this linen is Swagart Belfast linen and I love it. I could, you know, I'm like, if I'm gonna have linen, this is what I want. So Never mind about that. Let's let me show you my progress. So, this is the progress on the enchanted forest. And I finished this flower here and this flower. And I think this is like a little snowflake. So I did that and then I started there's a big tree beside the house. And as you can see, it's a variegated thread. So it takes a little bit of time, but uh, it's, very, it's a very cute stitch. It is. I like it. And I love the fabric and that helps a lot with, you know, I'm, I'm always like, you have to enjoy the process. It's the process, which is the important thing, not the finish. For me, it is anyway. So, you know, it has to feel right. And this feels very nice. So I think I'm going back to my mom's tomorrow. So I'll be continuing stitching on that. And I just love it that they give you like the whole chart cut up in three different pieces. And then you get three other pieces where they've cut up the pattern in different sections, which you can cut out. So. I won't show you the pattern, but there are just small pieces. It's like they're smaller than my hand. So it's small parts of the, yeah, the pattern. So you don't need like a big pattern. I, I like that. That's a really nice feature that they have. So I can highly recommend the, the cross stitch kits that the owl embroidery, owl forest embroidery um, company has. So that's really nice. So that those are the only things that I've stitched on. No, I'm no way. I stitched on the mini as well. I forget about the mini because I did a start video, new start video. But of course, I stitched, I have a little bit of progress after that day. Whoops. So this is how it looks. This is mini dragon in the morning. It's an heaven and earth design and it's Randall Spangler. Yeah. And I love when the parking threads are like hanging down there. Yeah, and I have it on a quantum frame as well. A frame which is, it's too big for this size, but I didn't have anything else to choose between. So that's also a progress, of course. So that's that. 
um yeah and you don't see it now this is my once upon a fairy tale i still haven't stitched anything on that and i think y'all know about the thing about the color 09 and 08 that there is like a big issue with this color and I haven't read everything about it um, but if I understand all of this correctly uh, Michelle who is donor and uh, I don't know how much of the charting she does, if she does it herself or if she has people doing it for her now, I don't know. But she sent out an email, and that's how I found out about it from the start, that um, there was something wrong with the dye lot of 09. Um, that it wasn't correct or something. So in the mail, she explained that you can exchange this color if you don't look like the looks of it, change it to one of the old brown colors. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, and then like, I'm a member in different stitching groups and designer groups. <clears throat> and then I read something about that. It has nothing to do this, so this wasn't the heaven and earth design group it was another group who mentioned that it wasn't thread at all that the, that there was something wrong with it was the software program you which you use for charting the designs and there was a little bit of uh, talk about that michelle on heaven and earth you know isn't using i don't know if she's using the wrong program or whatever but 09 and 08 are new colors which came three years ago i think and there are other charting programs that shows the more true color of these new colors i don't know but it was something with you know you can't just use one software program you need to use different software programs to kind of double check if the colors are correct i as i said i haven't followed the drama about this so why i say drama is because i got a feeling of some drama starting which had to do with charting and the colors and all of that and it kind of makes me very sad because the drama that starts with these things it just grows and it grows on me and when I hold this piece once upon a fairy tale because this is a chart which a lot of people has purchased and the max color version has these colors and now i feel just negativity towards that chart it's not towards the people is that drama it has just been weaved into this thing i don't know it i maybe it sounds a bit ridiculous but that's a little bit how i feel towards diamond painting as well because there were some drama going on on YouTube, I don't know. And it just took the edge off of things. And yeah, so I, I don't know. I have, I think I have five charts which contains, which are max colors, which has these colors in them. And I'm very glad that I haven't stitched that much on them. So once Michelle has worked through, she said like 14,000, I mean 14,000 
shards that she needs to work through and she's going to send out replacements for everyone and I think those people who has bought the material packs are going to get replacements I think I'm not sure about the material packs but I know the shards she has already started and I have gotten two of my five or six five or six and this is why it makes me very sad because yes I have ordered shards and packs material packs and stuff from heaven and earth where there has been mistakes but i have always 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 gotten help from heaven and earth their customer service is the best it's like you know diamond art club it's customer service it's I could never dream of going to Facebook and bad talking heaven and earth because of a mistake. I turned to them about the mistake and they've always helped me with that and corrected the mistake. And everything has been fine and you know you get a direct contact with Michelle if that is you know if you need to do that and I, I don't know they're working their asses off on heaven and earth right now to to fix the problem and I I really appreciate what they're doing for their stitchers and I, I usually say I don't know what I would have done if I haven't found out about heaven and earth is it sounds maybe a bit ridiculous but these patterns and that way of stitching has brought me so much joy in life and uh, relaxation and uh, it's like not therapy but recharging batteries which you need for life you know for living life so I hold heaven and earth very, very, very dearly to my heart, even if there is, are mistakes sometimes, but yeah. So I don't like the drama and somehow I have put that drama into that once upon a time piece. Why? I don't know. This is just how I've put it over there. So I'm thinking, because I love that design, but I haven't stitched that much on it. So I'm a little bit like, I think, and also because I have already bought the material pack from another uh, seller. So the material pack I have now won't fit the new chart. And I don't want to stitch the chart it, that is wrong. I want to stitch the correct chart or pattern or whatever. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, so now I have, I guess, lots of threads that I can't use because I think the zero nine is like, I think it's about 7,000 stitches and that's quite a lot. And I've, started to think at least with the bookshelves that maybe the max colors are just it's gonna there is a lot of confetti as it is on the regular colors with the motifs so to get away from the negativity which i feel towards the piece right now is i think i'm gonna get the super sized once upon a fairy tale with regular colors and just restart it. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna do that. So that's the thought I have right now. So that piece is really on hold for the moment. Um, I don't have any haul at all. I have plenty of orders coming in, but everything is going so slow. So, but I hope uh, I have some stuff coming. I have 
one, two, three, four, five, six different places where I'm expecting packages. But, however, I received a knit crate. Um, I think it's like the March version. And I haven't looked inside, so I thought we were going to take a look inside. Um, let's see. I don't know where I have my scissors. I have no memory of what's in it. So it's here. Some nice paper. Ooh, wow. Oh, we got these uh, stitch. Uh, yeah, these are good to have to count when you need to count. Oh, wow, that was soft. Mm, it smells good too. Oh, I love this color. I just bought a dress in this color. And what's that? Oh, it's for the, the needles, I guess. You put them on the, the ends so you don't hurt yourself. Yeah, it says March 2020. And then Corona came, so. Uh, let's see. What, which package did I get? Are these the sock yarns? No, no. This can't be so. It's the Ancient Pines. Chill out. Wow. This was... Uh, it, it has a um, very nice feel to it. So this is the one I got. Chill out. A tranquil blend of blue, blue green and teal make up this deep shade. Reminiscent, I don't know how you pronounce that, of a lush pine forest. Oh, I love pine forests. Let's see, do we get something fun to stitch? Ooh, no. You get a hat and cowl. I, this one looked nice. But I didn't like that it just goes to these seashell capulet. But the hat was really nice with a, um, oh, what do you call it? Is it chains? I think so. That was nice. And the cowl is the same. I could, yeah, I could uh, imagine doing that if I can understand the English pattern, of course. And this one was um, crocheting. It's actually quite nice. I think it's quite nice, actually. But I haven't been knitting for, for long now. So, yeah. This was nice. It was a nice surprise. So that's the only thing I got. Oh, I need to. The, um, the yarn, of course, is La Brebis. Ooh, it's light alpaca. No, it's a 100% baby alpaca. Wow, that explains why it's so nice. I could, I could use this in my bed and just play with it. Now, that is something I wouldn't say about my cross stitching. I w would like to sleep with it in bed. So that's that. I think that's all.
So this is my first giveaway ever to, you know, um, to host or whatever you say. Um, I'm very nervous about it uh, because I don't want to get, you know, um, fooled by anyone or anything. And I want to show my appreciation to, to, the, to the majority of you guys. And uh, I actually never thought I would get, you know, 500 subscribers. And now I have more than 500. So it's, it's a lot of fun. And I think most of you has joined since I started my floss tube. So I think my audience are more uh, cross-stitch, uh, love uh, cross-stitch related than the diamond painting, which I did in the beginning when I started the channel. Um, <clears throat> so to show you my appreciation, um, oh, I can see my hand, it's all... I got a mosquito mosquito bites on my hand. Oh. And yesterday I, I had a tick on my leg. I need to keep an eye on that so it doesn't, the, you know, the, the red skin doesn't grow. Then you, I need to go to the doctor. Anyway, uh, um, yes, so, and because of the situation we have with the mailing and everything, I felt uh, it is the wrong time to uh, uh, have giveaways of stuff which I'm sending out. Uh, so I would like to keep that in for the future. So what I'm going to give to whoever wins is a heaven and earth digital pattern. Because I love heaven and earth if you haven't figured that out already uh, and um, yes I as I said I think I have like a hundred patterns I will never ever stitch them all I'm happy if I finish one like these two I have in the background uh, they have beginner patterns they have quick stitches they have minis they have regulars they have super size they have whichever size but with match ma uh, max colors oh and they have the story keeps so they have a lot to choose between and they have all kinds of designers and you don't have to stitch it on 25 count you can stitch it on bigger count if you like you can stitch it on smaller count if you like um you don't have to park you don't have to extreme cross cross country stitch you don't have to start in the top left corner you can start it in the middle if you like and it will bring you so much joy I promise so for me cross stitching is two parts I think most of us are saying it one part is to stitch the other part is to collect and I'm participating in both sides of the hobby so even if you have many patterns, even if you don't plan to start a heaven and earth, you have a chance to win a pattern now, whichever you like. Um, there are three things I want you to do. I want you to subscribe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check out so whoever wins i'm gonna see if you you need to describe you need to subscribe to the channel of course and you need to fill out second part you need to fill out the form and you can find the link down here in the description box where there are some information i want for like what's your youtube name so i can see some people has very strange names and some people don't have that very strange and your email account so I know where to um, send the pattern for and such stuff. Um, those two things and then the third thing. So I'm going to do the, the comment um, 
picker, if you call it like that. So you need to comment on this video. You have to comment on this video. Don't use the word giveaway. You need to write the word HAID, which is short for Heaven and Earth Designs. So capital letters H-A-E-D. So that's the word I'm going to look for when I pick out the comment. So, and now you hear my dog barking because there was a car just outside. Okay, so this is the first ever giveaway I have ever hosted, so I don't know if I'm doing things right or wrong. But I've, I've participated as someone who wants to win something in these giveaways. So I'm trying to figure out a good way to do this. So fill out the form, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment on this video with the word HAID in it. All right? And I will leave this open for, because I usually don't get that many comments and I'm a very small channel. So I think I will leave, leave it up for two weeks. So um, either I will have a new floss tube in the next weekend, which will be number 15. Uh, then I will wait for the weekend after that and have a new floss tube, which will be number 16. So let's say that floss tube 16, I will pronounce the winner. All right. I hope that wasn't too uh, hard to follow along. I hope not. But if you have any questions about it, just ask. Uh, so I hope you find that okay with uh, me showing the appreciation. I'm like a huge heaven and earth fan. I love them. I cherish them. If I would ha ever, ever have to choose a pattern to stitch, it would be one of them. There's right. So that's why. And then I don't need to, you know, mail stuff out. And some countries don't accept mail from Sweden yet and all that. So I think a digital pattern would be awesome. And as I said, you can choose whatever you like. There is from the for the beginner and there's there's for the one who wants the big challenge. So, uh, and if you wonder, heaven and earth isn't that difficult to stitch. It's just cross stitching. They're big and the full coverage, but there is no specialty stitches. There are no back stitching or anything. And you can get pre-graded fabric, which will, you know, you know, save you a lot of headaches and there is the pattern keeper if you have the Android tablet, which will make life even more easier. So don't be afraid. Just do it. <laughs> all right. So I think that will be all for today. Um, thank you everyone who is subscribing, old subscribers and new subscribers. You're all very much appreciated. I love doing these videos. It makes me feel like I'm not alone, not alone in the, in the craft and that I'm getting friends out there and like that there's a big family all over the world and it's, it's a wonderful feeling. So keep stitching, keep staying safe and keep distance, you know, just take care out there. And I hope you're enjoying the summer. It's raining cats and dogs outside, which makes me very happy because then I can stay home and stitch. <laughs> so I will, I think, see you soon again for maybe a stitch and chat. I don't know. Maybe a stitch along. We'll see. So take care. Leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you next time. Thanks you for, uh, thank you for watching. <laughs> Bye.